I want to take a couple of minutes today to talk about visual filters in the new Logos 4. Uh, visual filters have changed quite a bit since the, the, the new version came out. Uh, they're much easier to use. They're much more powerful. And so I want to show you how to set up a few basic uh, visual filters. One of the other things that we're going to see is that with the use of reverse interlinears now, we can actually do searches or create filters based on the underlying Greek text, but have it show up in our English text. And that can be a, a very powerful feature as well. So we'll look at a little bit of both of those things as we go through. One of the things that I want to set up is a, a basic visual filter that shows you how to mark, for example, let's highlight all of the imperative verbs uh, in our New Testament. I have the New American Standard 95 update open here. And what I want to do is I want to create a filter that highlights all of the imperative verbs. So I'll go up here under File, and I'll select Visual Filter. That opens our Visual Filter dialog box. Now, since I want to look for a morphological form, imperative verbs, I need to make sure to select Morphology up here. And so I have this new search query. This is the way that uh, Logos 4 handles search uh, text now. You have this little sentence that you have to create. And it says, I'm going to search all morphological text, all passages. Uh, well, I really just want the New Testament. So if I scroll down here, I'm just going to select the New Testament. Uh, I'm going to say, I just want my New American Standard. So I'll select that. And then under the morphological form, you have three choices. The Anderson Form Aramaic the Logos Greek morphology, and the Anderson Forbes Hebrew. I want the Logos Greek. Obviously, I'm going to mark imperative verbs in the New Testament, so I need my Greek morphology. Then I can just click in the Find dialog box, and I can begin. Now, the one little trick to this that you have to know, and it's not very intuitive, I'm willing to admit, is you start by selecting the at symbol. As soon as you type in the at symbol, it gives you your choice of parts of speech. Now, since I want imperative verbs, I'm going to select verb. And when I do, it gives me all of the other morphological forms that are available. Here, I simply want to select imperatives. And then if I just click in the formatting box, it allows me to select some kind of highlighting. Let's say, for example, I want to mark all of my imperatives green. And you'll notice that as soon as I selected that, I had some highlights show up over here. Now, I'm in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. And so you'll notice that in verse 17, it says, So then do not be foolish. Uh, do not be foolish is an imperative. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand is a, a command. We must understand what the will of the Lord is. And then in verse 18, he says, Do not get drunk with wine. Again, another imperative. But be filled with the Spirit. Now, that's, if that's all I need to do, uh, I can go ahead and change the title of my filter. Uh, so if I click on the little pencil here, you'll notice the pop-up says edit this text. I just click on the pencil and I say imperative verbs. And if I tab out of that, that filter has now been saved. I can close this. And you'll notice that, that the filter is actually running. Those imperative verbs are still highlighted in my, in my text. And the way you turn those off and on now is actually quite easy. You go up under where it shows this little Olympic rings kind of symbol, and it says visual filters, and I just click on it. And you'll scroll, scroll down, and you'll notice that the one that I have turned on right now is imperative verbs. So I can turn that off. They disappear. I can go back. And it should be um, right in here. Turn that on. They show back up. Okay. So very easy to turn visual filters off and on. Now, again, understand what we did. We marked the Greek verb tenses of forms of imperatives in our English text, which is, is actually pretty cool. One of the other things that comes up quite often is the association of participles with imperatives. So let's say that we wanted to highlight both the imperatives and the participles. I can go back up here to my file and my visual filter that I just worked on is going to be at the top or at least close to the top if I've been working on some other visual filters. Click on imperative verbs. You'll see that I'm back to my imperative verb filter. This time I want to look for participles. 
so I'm going to start with my at symbol. Now, participles are classified as verbs. They're the part of speech of verbs. And as I go through, you'll notice that the mood is participle. So I want to mark all my participles. And I'm going to mark them. I'm going to change my formatting here. Let's make those uh, purple. Bingo. So as soon as I did that, again, you'll see how immediate that is. Those are turned on. And now I can edit the name of this to say imper imperative verbs plus participles. And now I have a visual filter that I can turn off and on that categorizes or highlights in my text imperative verbs and participles. I can turn it off. They go away. Turn them back on. And I can see them just fine. Now, for example, let's go over to Colossians 3, verse 16. You'll see another situation where you have uh, our imperative is to let the word of Christ richly dwell within us. Uh, we are to, to do that. That is a command. And how do we do that? Well, the participles show us through teaching, admonishing, singing, uh, and giving are the participles that, that we have. So very neat way to highlight all of those. Uh, another interesting one is in James chapter 4, starting in verse 6. Let's look over there. Look at the string of part of, excuse me, imperatives that we have right here in verse 7, 8, 9, and 10, and even going down into 11. Submit, resist, draw, cleanse, purify, be miserable, be mournful, weep, uh, let your laughter be turned into mourning and humble yourself. All of those are imperatives. And even here in verse 11, do not speak. So just that easy. We have all the imperative verbs marked in our text. We have the, all, all of the participles marked in our text. And we can do some good exegetical work just using those visual filters.